Damn it! How long have we been doing this show? The Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, it's The Wrestling Life. It's episode 369. It's WrestleMania weekend 2024. I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. Liam, we have so much to talk about this week. And as always, so many things we can't talk about on the first and only wrestling podcast. It's WrestleMania week, Crab fans. It's our 10th anniversary. That too. (laughs) Unbelievable. I guess we're just going to keep doing these. (laughs) (laughs) Until like Zoom prices us out of... (laughs) Of uh, of record of paying to uh, record longer than like thirty minutes or whatever the free version is now. Here we are, and uh, here WrestleMania week is, and it's I don't know, it feels like a slightly bigger WrestleMania than say the one that happened in the Performance Center, or <laughs> maybe may- maybe any any post pandemic mania here. Um. Yeah, WrestleMania weekend is here. Let's uh, let's preview the show. <laughs> we right. have we have the uh, we have the card for each night, which is, I guess, something that they've done a few years in a row, or since they uh, started the two night thing. They have released the cards uh, ahead of time. Maybe the exception of the 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 pandemic here, I don't remember. Mm. But all right, so night one, the Rock and Roman Reigns versus Cody Rose and Seth Rollins. Mm-hmm. Uh, does the Rock get through this without a major injury? <laughs> well, he's been training with Gallus apparently, so uh, I I would assume he's taken a few bumps without hurting himself. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think he can because it's going to be 90 if he's smart, it's going to be. And the way they have portrayed him on TV in his interactions, in his physical interactions so far, he's he's Thanos. He's <laughs> he throws one punch and, and the guys go flying. So it's going to be, I think, a lot of him doing his offense, throwing punches and clotheslines and and uh and monologuing while while Cody and Seth sell for him and then maybe he has to take like a crossroads at the end of the match and try not to tear anything. We'll talk more about this as we move forward here. The um LWO of Rey Mysterio and Dragon Lee are wrestling Santo de- Santos Escobar and Ray Son Dominic for some reason. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I think because maybe all these people share an ethnicity. <laughs> Seems to be a lot of putting people in various factions based on your ethnicity in WWE right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you think about uh, Ray and Dragon uh, mixing it up with Santos and Dirty Dom? I think it could be a really fun match. Everybody... Well, there's three good workers in here, and Dominic is very good at what he can do. So, yeah, I think it'll be a fun match. It, I've just, I've been waiting so long, and Dominic's hair has gotten so long that I'm like, they have to do hair versus mask. They have to. And then I thought that's what they were going when Dominic got randomly got involved in Ray's match with Santos a couple of weeks ago. I was like, oh, that, they're doing it. They're finally doing it. Like, nope, they're just doing a tag match. But, um. Yeah, I guess it gives it gives Dominic something marquee to do, and it gets gets it gets some bodies on the show. <laughs> Bianca Belair, Jade Cargill, and Naomi versus Damage Controls, Dakota Kai, Asuka, and Kyrie Sane. Uh, Jade Cargill was in the Royal Rumble, but this will be her first proper WWE match, a six woman tag. And uh, what do you think? Uh, I thought her her uh, that. That final segment of the next to last SmackDown before Mania with her uh, siding with the baby faces and everybody beating up damage control. I thought that was good. Good presentation. Entrance looks cool. Um, and Jade in a tag team might be the best use of her in the immediate future. 
heck of a uh, pop up power bomb, or not quite a pop up power bomb, but mm -hmm. along those lines. Uh, the Uso brothers are going to wrestle. This isn't quite as bad to me as uh, when they would uh, every seven years they would split Jeff and Matt Hardy up and make <laughs> them wrestle. And um, they had one match at a WrestleMania. And uh, now the Usos are going to wrestle each other at WrestleMania. And um, I guess on some level, I find it easier to believe that these guys don't like each other than, uh, it, than I did with the Hardys. But I also don't think it's a great idea to have them wrestle each other. Um, I also think maybe Jimmy's winning so Cody will have an opponent post-Mania. I don't know. What do you think? That would make sense. We talked about that a little bit off the air this week is that and I think it came up because there was a quote in uh, Becky's book uh, that recently came out about her New York Times bestseller. That's right. You own four copies. Uh, and uh, I think there's a there's a quote. She talks about something about how she was not super enthused to work with uh, Lacey Evans post her winning both belts at WrestleMania. What? Um, what a, yeah, what a, what a C for, <laughs> for not wanting to work with this very green, uh, unproven talent. So, and her point was that they should have had other challengers already like being heated up for her, you know, like pro wrestling is supposed to do <laughs> like pro wrestling promoters are supposed to do. Um, uh, so yes, you do need heels. If assuming <laughs> as I think we still all are that Cody is winning the belt on Sunday, He's going to need guys to wrestle, and hopefully it's not a bunch of guys coming off of losses. I think we all think Cody's winning, but I think we all think... I think we all have about a 10% chance in our in our mind that um, we are allowing for a 10% chance that he will not win. The and more... It, yeah, I would say the more excitement and like energy that has gone towards... Well, gosh, I really want a Cody Rock singles match over the last month because it's <laughs> felt like they're building a Cody Rock singles match since The Rock has been has been back. The more I've been like, somebody's going to say, well, The Rock's kind of overshadowing things here. It doesn't make sense to take the, the belt off Roman at this show. We should wait until uh, we should wait until SummerSlam or next year's WrestleMania because then it, we can build it more around just Roman than the title reign. Like I have, I have to have a feeling that somebody, somebody is thinking that or pitching that at least once across this week. So, as we discuss this, um, there was an ESPN article today about The Rock being in a training camp with Gallus and and all those things to get ready for this match and it, he points out uh, I'm not off the board after after this match he is though because he's filming two movies in a row back to back after this mm -hmm. um, and you know typically six weeks shoots and that puts uh, I'm not sure when the smashing machine uh, shoot starts but well you know he's out for three months minimum Mm -hmm. after this and uh, provided he doesn't uh, tear every muscle in his body uh, so SummerSlam even seems a little bit early uh, for that uh, the Cody Rock match but mm -hmm. I feel like we are we are going to get it somewhere sometime um, yeah we'll see uh, six pack ladder match for the tag team titles um, this thing has the potential to be a real cluster as they uh, have driven home on television that the titles can be won separately in this year ladder match. <laughs> if you climb the ladder, you can only remove and you choose to, you can only remove one set of <laughs> titles. You can leave the other titles hanging there. Anyway, it seems like they're splitting the tag titles, which, you know, fine, whatever. Um, but uh, what a convoluted way to go about it. Yeah, it's weird <laughs> uh, that they just threw that in. And I feel like there was there was a brief time when the Usos had both sets where they started just defending one set. Like they would defend the SmackDown titles on a SmackDown and then a, the Raw titles on a Raw. Yes, they did that. 
for like a few weeks and then they went back to defending both sets. Uh, uh, so seems like this has been in the cards before and they changed their minds. So they're certainly like, yeah, but you you would think, why would you float that out there if you're not doing that? Yeah. The teams in this are uh, Finn Balor and Damian Priest. Damian Priest still running around with the briefcase. Boy, that seems like a really dumb thing right now. <laughs> uh, DIY with uh, the uh, two elderly gentlemen, Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa. Uh, Miz and R-Truth who are both older than Gargano and Ciampa somehow. Mm-hmm. Uh, the New Day. Uh, or as uh, Kevin Von Erich would say, the new gay. <laughs> uh, Pete Dunn and Tyler Bate of the New Catch Republic. Terrible name. Yeah. And uh, A-Town Down Unders, Austin Theory and Grayson Waller. You know, and I think there is still a chance that Theory and Waller end up doing something with some like YouTube celebrity on this show in an angle and are taken out of the match. Uh, and another team will be put in there. But... Um, you know, I uh, am rarely wrong, but uh, Grayson Waller's really grown on me. <laughs> I thought this guy was the worst and had zero idea what they saw in him. And you know what? I think he's a bigger star than Austin Theory now. <laughs> oh, way bigger. I agree with that completely. Yeah. And I think he may have more potential. I mean, even if it's just the Miz's spot for the next 15 years or whatever, mm-hmm. I am buying stock in Grayson Waller right now. He is everything they want. <laughs> <laughs> like Pajar- he pejorative. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but to your point, he is, in my opinion, everything that they were trying to force <laughs> with Austin theory for the last couple of years. Uh, he is maybe you could argue that like theory is a better athlete than him or something, but I just, I've never for a second cared about anything Austin theory has done on WWE television. And Grayson is at least you're like, Oh yeah. Yeah. He's, he's an entertaining enough performer. He can mix it up. He, and I think he and uh, he and Owens did some, some good stuff together on SmackDown. Like you, you like he's a guy you like so you can get beat up. So he's got he's got that uh, that punchable face that is important for a for a Miz type role. Yeah, I think he's a better athlete than Theory. I think Theory is a better worker. Okay, um, but we're splitting hairs here. Sure. Um, all right. Intercontinental title match on night one: uh, Gunther versus Sami Zayn. I think we got to get that belt off Gunther at some point so that he can uh, wrestle Cody somewhere over the summer. Or, I don't know, maybe we're still months off from that. I don't know. But I feel like Sami Zayn has to win this title. Yeah, I think he should. Um, He's a good choice. I know there's a sentimental portion of the audience that wanted Gable to come back. And they did, you know, book him to lose in his hometown in front of his daughters a few months ago. (laughs) So maybe people thought, well, that has to be leading to him winning the title somewhere down the line from Gunther. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you could make that argument if they're saving it for, for Gable, but no, I think this is, this is, you want, you want to do a big moment like that on a big stage and Gunther losing for the first time in front of that crowd at WrestleMania will feel like a giant moment. So, and Sammy's a very over baby face. So even though he may not, be the you know the internet sent you know sentimental favorite he's very over with wwe's audience so yeah i think sammy should win taking off night one rhea ripley defending the women's world title against becky lynch becky has done more media i think than anyone has ever done (laughs) with her book coming out and leading into wrestlemania here and I think she's working when she says that uh, her contract's up in two months and she hasn't, like, they haven't started talking about it yet. I think mm-hmm. that's, I think they probably have a, some kind of agreement in place and they're just waiting to sign it for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. Um, I also think uh, Becky Lynch is losing this match. What do you think? 
Yeah, I, I, I just don't. It doesn't feel like Becky gets anything out of beating, <laughs> beating Rhea. I know they've tried to make that case of like this is her McFoley te- attempt to to prove that she could still hang as the <laughs> as the decrepit old thirty four year old that she is or whatever. Um, thirty seven. Yeah. Okay. Sure. But uh, yeah, I just. Yeah, it doesn't feel like doesn't feel like this is uh this has felt like a changing of the guard program. Um it's been fine. I think ever I think both of her and Rhea have been fine in it, but it doesn't feel like it's a it's time for Rhea to lose the belt. And also they're just absolutely in love with everyone holding the belts for multiple years, seemingly. So it just feels like Rhea will hold that belt for a long time. Which is fine. I got no problem with that. But um, let's uh, maybe have her uh, put her in programs. Mm. <laughs> have, have, have her, her def- have her to wrestle. Have her defend that title. Oh yeah, yeah. All right. Night two kicks off with uh, freaking versus uh, Drew McIntyre for the World Heavyweight Championship. I think Seth gets cucked here on night two. I think Drew's uh, winning this belt. Yeah, I think he should. (laughs) He's like, I mean, aside from maybe you could argue Cody and The Rock, I think he's the most entertaining guy on Raw most weeks for the last two months. And it's me saying this. Yes. So, you know, it means something. But no, I I think he should win it. It seems pretty clear the match is him and Punk when he gets back. So, yeah, Drew should win and should keep the belt until Punk's back. And then we meander back around to Punk and Seth uh, next year this time. Absolutely. Yeah. EO Sky versus Bailey for the WWE Women's Championship. Um, yeah, I think Bailey's winning and uh, I think uh, pretty handedly. Yeah, this feels like the whole... <laughs> This is yeah, ba- Bailey returning to uh to baby face them needs to uh needs to finish with her with her winning the belt and overcoming the uh her friends who stabbed her in the back. So yeah, I think she she wins and she should win. Matchup of uh, young up and comers, LA Knight versus AJ Styles <laughs> to uh like a 41 year old guy and a 48 year old guy. Mm-hmm. Gonna mm-hmm. have a uh, singles match here. Um, I don't know. It seems like a fine use of uh, both guys, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Uh, you know, I don't. I don't know what to expect from a match between these guys at the stage. But um, people love LA Knight, and, and and people will be into this match. And I think LA Knight should win. Although I guess AJ would be another heel you could have go over to set up a challenger for Cody. That's interesting too. Yeah, you could do that. Um, I think I expect a perfectly fine, uh, competent pro wrestling match, but not. Mm-hmm. We're not gonna. We're not gonna light the world on fire here. Uh, Logan Paul defending against Randy Orton and Kevin Owens in a triple threat match. What? Logan, uh, I was thinking well, about this. What? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Is there is there a comparison in your head to where Randy Orton is right now? Like a historical wrestler in their career nothing pops to mind but it feels like you have one in the chamber yes so i feel right now like randy orton is uh 2007 chris jericho he was gone for a while now he's back people were really happy to see him when he came back yeah and they ain't been doing much since and he's he's just not a super captivating or interesting character on television (laughs) okay um, I don't feel that strongly one way or the other about it, but maybe that's your point. <laughs> um, uh, so Jericho came back. Let's relitigate this. He mm-hmm. uh, he came back and immediately got put into a title program with Randy Orton. Mm-hmm. Uh, they had JBL interfere mm-hmm. in the title match and uh, had Jim Ross hammer home on commentary that JBL has kicked Chris Jericho out of the title picture. It's like, well, why? <laughs> why? He got screwed why should he won the match technically yeah and why is he on now feuding with jbl and this was like 
second run post retirement JBL also mm -hmm. who had uh, uh breasts <laughs> and wasn't especially good in mm -hmm. the ring on on that second run and and um uh, and uh they proceeded to stink it up for like uh three months in a row on pay-per-view mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh then Jericho eventually found his uh, Nick Bogwinkle character right ends up at Jericho specifically at that mania is ends up in the money in the bank match so yeah uh yeah that's just what it kind of feels like you just feel like you would think Randy Orton only a few months back from from a comeback after you know a year and a half off would be in a more interesting spot than a three-way for the U.S. title but I don't know just like people still are happy to see him still gets a big pop when he comes out but just uh just not a lot happening. <laughs> not a lot. Uh, not a lot to write home about with uh, with this Randy run for the last few months. What if we have um, um, we have Owens win the title here, and uh, we have Orton uh, turn and uh, go with Logan Paul, and we do a two man power trip thing, and uh, those guys wrestle for the tag team titles. Sure. <laughs> I would at least it's something. something different. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. This is just, I'm just spitballing here. This is off the top of my head. It seems like uh, Randy, well, Randy, too, it's like he probably isn't going to be a heel, but he's so much better suited to be a heel. Yes. <laughs> than smiling, happy, happy go lucky, uh, leaping in the air, <laughs> <laughs> touching his toes, Randy Garden. Yes. Um, this bizarre match is happening uh, on on WrestleMania. A six man Philadelphia street fight <laughs> with Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits wrestling Karrion Cross and the Authors of Pain. Um, if there was a pre show, like I understand, I I get it. Also, really, this kind of has to open the show. Uh, uh, so I'm I'm not completely convinced that this is the match order because how in the world do you put this before the main event unless the idea is we need a buffer and we need something to stick the joint out and we <laughs> need to give people a chance to go out and get their pretzel and their popcorn mm -hmm. before the uh the cinema begins i think that's the exact uh the exact thought this is the this is the cody and damian sandow uh, versus the Funk, the Funkasaurus, and and Lord Tensai match of this year's <laughs> WrestleMania. Lord Tensai. Oh man, uh, I want to talk about Becky's book in a minute. Okay. Uh, that that jogged my memory. Uh, Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes, uh, with the stipulation to be determined by Night One's main event, and uh, we've kind of already talked about uh, what we think uh, could happen here. I think that uh, this should probably be bloodline rules, and that means either Cody or Seth is doing a job on night one. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. You're just stacking the deck against Cody, give him another obstacle to overcome. I got no problem with that, uh, except for the fact where, you know, 53-year-old The Rock is going to pin Cody, Ro Cody Rhodes the night before. <laughs> biggest night of his life i don't know mm -hmm. i don't know. i don't know yeah i mean my thought is well you should just pin seth then because i don't think cody should lose but also you probably set up a near fall because you can do the finish of last year's mania where solo gives him the thumb roman gives him a spear and the rock gives him the rock bottom or the people's elbow or whatever yeah and cody doesn't kick out and then you do it again on night two and cody kicks out this time yeah. So yeah, that works. So yeah, there's there's there is an argument for pinning Cody in this match, unlike a month ago when Drew just pinned him for no reason. Utterly bizarre. <laughs> yeah. That's uh I think that's uh I think that's WrestleMania there, everybody. And uh that's both nights of mania. Very quickly. Um so I know you won't watch. Uh NXT Santa <laughs> Deliver the next uh, the Saturday morning. Uh, I think the pre-show starts at 11 or 11.30, and then, well, the pre-show is probably a half hour of talking from 11 to 11.30, and then one match from 11.30 to noon Eastern, and that match will be Sean Spears versus Joe Gacy, so set your DVRs. 
Joe Man. Gacy finished with his uh, prop based feud with Dijak, is he? Uh, yeah, but he's still he's a wacky guy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So uh, they they apparently were. Re- I don't know. There was a report from Fightful on Tuesday that uh, so Gacy was wrestling uh, Oba Femi, the uh, North American champion on Tuesday's NXT show. Mm-hmm. And uh, he got he took like a urinage or something, and uh, he was trying to bump around for Obafemi, who, by the way, I don't know, is just a, a an ETM. He is a <laughs> licensed a, a license to print money. He uh, should already be. <laughs> he should probably be WWE champion. Yeah, he should beat Seth the way that <laughs> Diesel beat Bob Backlund. Uh, yeah. Seth Seth would recover from that and Oba would be launched as superstardom. Yeah. Uh so Oba Femi's wrestling Gacy. He takes the urine. Gacy is trying to bump around for this guy and uh like takes the urinagi on the back of his head or something. Not Oba Femi's fault whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Uh Joe Gacy's fault. Referee throws up the X and uh they stop the match and they call it a no contest. Weird because I would have thought they would have called it a ref stoppage and the winner would be Oba Femi. Mm-hmm. But um, it came off in such a way that it was like, I think this is a fake injury. I think this is an angle. Mm-hmm. But then Fightful reports that uh, it wasn't an angle. They were really um, l- legitimately concerned that Gacy had been concussed, uh, taking bumps on his head. Mm-hmm. And and then they were rewriting TV segments as this was going on. But they they, I guess, felt confident enough that Gacy's going to be okay that they later in the show announced he's wrestling uh, the chairman, Sean Spears, uh, on the pre-show on Saturday. Anyway. <laughs> well. 13,000 people in the building for this. For Sean Spears versus Joe Gacy. Sean Spears is going to be like one of the most over guys <laughs> of the whole weekend, probably. Probably so. Uh, people love to chant things. Um, there is uh Ilya Dragunov versus Tony D'Angelo for the NST championship. This feud's been wacky. Uh, Tony D is not winning the NXT championship, and uh, it's not the most important match on the show, so no one cares. Oba Femi versus Dijak versus Josh Briggs. Josh Briggs, I think, has been left up left to his own devices to come up with his own character, and he's come up with like uh, aces and eights guy. <laughs> He's come up with like Wes Briscoe as my character, Oof. and uh, and they split up his tag team with uh, Brooks Jensen, and uh, very clearly those two guys need each other and need to be a tag team, and instead they've split them up. Whatever, uh, Obafemi should win that, and he should pin. Uh, he should win with uh, one foot on both guys' chests. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> As the finish. Uh, Lyra Valkyria, who I'm very high on, versus Roxanne Perez, who I'm also very high on. Mm. Uh, for the Women's Championship, Roxanne's miscast as a heel, but I understand them wanting to, like, let's see what you could do as a heel. Let's do it now on uh, on uh, developmental TV. That's fine. They um, had kind of an, a clunky match on the last pay-per-view, but uh, they're both very good. Baron Corbin and Braun Breaker versus Axiom and Nathan Frazier for the NXT tag titles. It's a match. Mm-hmm. Um, three of the four guys are very good, and one of the guys is uh, competent in Baron Corbin. <laughs> Has Corbin been down there a year yet? Feels like longer. <laughs> <laughs> I think he has, yeah. I think it's been about that. Maybe say, I, thought, I thought he showed up around around a year ago. I thought it was around the media show last year, but yeah, and now he's uh, you know he's tag champs with Braun Breaker, who's on the main roster now, right? I, yeah, so it feels like they're losing these. It just feels like Axiom and Nathan Frazier are a weird team to lose them to. <laughs> so maybe they're not losing them on this show, but mm. I don't know. Six woman tag with Thea Hale, Felon Henley, and Kalani Jordan versus JC Jane. Kind of James and Izzy Dame, horrible name. Uh, this is also a buffer match, and then uh, Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams. Trick Williams might be the most over guy at WrestleMania weekend. Uh, not uh, poo pooing your Sean Spears point, which I think is accurate, but people also love chanting "Whoop that 
trick. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, these guys have a a real a real uh, personal issue feud here that uh, has carried them to the main event of this show. And uh, Trick Williams' money he's still very green. Carmelo Hayes is very small, and I have no <laughs> idea what he's doing in the ring at any given time. But people seem to like him because he's polite and rarely late. So uh, there we go. That's NXT Santa's Liver Saturday at noon. Anything to add? Uh, not really. Yeah, it feels like there was a lot of talk a couple of years ago that Carmelo Hayes was like a, a star in the making. Shawn Michaels, I think, has always put him over and spoke very highly of him. And I have no doubt that like he is a, a, a wrestler after Shawn Michaels' own heart. But I think we both, and I, I think I just asked you, I looked at Trick Williams one time and I was just like, well, he's the one that's going to be... <laughs> Is going to be the right. star, right? And you're like, yes, he's actually probably better. <laughs> and he's yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's taller, he's better physique, he has more charisma. Mm-hmm. Like Hayes is right now. Hayes right now has is probably a more polished promo, but uh, you believe things that Trick is saying more than the things that Carmelo is saying. If that mm-hmm. makes sense. Yes, absolutely. And and uh, Carmelo is five foot three, and <laughs> and. Trick is 6'2 with a body like an action figure. Like, yeah. <laughs> I like, they did a bit because Carmelo was in the US title tournament a few months ago on SmackDown, still as baby yes. face. Yep. And they did one show where Trick ran in to save him. I yes. think it was before the last NXT special. Yeah. And Trick got a gigantic reaction. And yeah. I was like, oh, <laughs> that's a really <laughs> bad sign for Carmelo Hayes that in the middle of his, his, uh, main roster audition so to speak his his tag partner showed up as like a one-off to promote the nxt pay-per-view and immediately got like twice the reaction he got (laughs) doing moves for the last 10 minutes yeah there's that weird thing too where um i think that was in maybe in memphis and like there is um so the that whoop that trick uh chant I think started in the NBA or something Mm -hmm. in Memphis. So it wasn't like people started chanting this for trick Williams. It's like a chant they adapted for trick Williams. Mm -hmm. So also already that city just wanted to chant whoop that trick. Sure. (laughs) But uh, yeah, he still was, he still got a much bigger reaction than than the other guy. All right. Carmel, if you get bored, it, during a Carmelo Hayes match, <laughs> which I feel like there's a pretty good chance of that, uh, just just think to yourself, okay, I'm just going to watch Carmelo for the next 90 seconds and ask yourself at any given time, what is he doing? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make sense. It, it's guaranteed not to make sense. All right, uh, that's WWE and NXT stuff. Uh, I guess we should touch here briefly on uh, Vince McMahon is alleged to have coerced uh, Janelle Grant into writing a love letter that was then leaked to the New York Post, which Mm -hmm. was apparently leaked from his side because it made uh, her seem... um, made her seem in love with him, and it made her, like more personally intertwined with him than perhaps her side had led on before she went to high school with one of his personal assistants. Mm -hmm. Um, There's some weird stuff there, Um, but uh, it was leaked from the McMahon side, which I didn't know there was a McMahon side at this point, but uh, yeah, that did not make Janelle Grant's side look good. But uh, she says that she was coerced, and I think maybe Vince, in leaking that, is trying to save himself some money. Sure. And uh, whatever the settlement here ends up being, uh, maybe smaller than it would have been before that was leaked. So that's weird. Yeah. Uh, anything to add on that? Um, yeah. I mean, her her lawyer did a little interview with um, with uh, I believe John Pollock and Brandon Thurston this week. Um, that I do encourage people. It's not very long. Uh, the actual interview portion, it's probably worth checking out as far as her response to those claims, just being, well, clearly this was coerced. Why else would she say that it's her 24th attempt to write it, which is how the the letter starts that was leaked. 
Right. Um, and then there's also, I think, an image of a text message where she shows off, I guess her fingers were injured and there's a text message about, you know, I'll get to your letter as soon as I'm healed up or something like that. So that was the counterpunch from, uh, from uh, Janelle Grant's side of the, uh, of the lawsuit to that, uh, that accusation. So yeah, it's going to get messy and uh, guys like Vince can avoid, avoid, uh, can afford some very uh, vicious and thorough uh, def- legal defense. So it's going to get messy and ugly and there's going to be, there won't be any stones left unturned, at least not as, as long as this goes, unless, as you said, the likely result is probably that this settles before it ever goes to court and things start getting entered into uh, uh, exhibits as evidence. So Ronda Rousey uh, is doing a book tour. A mm-hmm. uh, less successful book tour than Becky Lynch's book tour. Overshadowed again. What if? <laughs> yeah. We can talk about uh, one or two wrestling things she talked about uh, going forward there. But a lot of the theme of her book tour was my second run in WWE was a shit show. <laughs> I couldn't wait to get out of there. I pitched them stuff that I wanted to do. They didn't want to do anything I wanted to do. So then I was like, like you need all right. Well, then I'm working with my friends. <laughs> And or I'm going home and then it was OK, I'm working with my friends and then I'm going home. Mm-hmm. And also um, there's a culture, a a bad there is or was a bad culture there. Doesn't like Johnny Ace or Bruce Pritchard or Vince McMahon. Mm-hmm. And she also casually threw in that in a backstage interaction as an example of. um the weird culture towards women that existed in the company when she was there, she relayed a story about being at a show in 2022. And uh, I think pretty sure it's 2022. And uh, Drew Gulak started tugging on the drawstring of her sweatpants. Uh Uh-huh. Gulak issues a statement where he admits that this happened. Mm Mm-hmm. Don't you hate it when you go to shake a lady's hand and you accidentally end up tugging on her pants instead? What a what? <laughs> uh, sweatpants, drawstring, a human hand. These things are always getting confused. What? What a weird, what a weird thing. Like, <laughs> like on one of those things where, like, if you're trying to put your mind in like a corporate PR person, you're probably like, say nothing, <laughs> uh, or deny it. I guess. But if you were going to admit it, instead of saying, look, I have a weird sense of humor and I thought it would be funny. I saw it hanging out. I I just thought I was being like a weird, funny guy. It was dumb and inappropriate. And I apologize. Like, that's probably the only way if you if you were going to admit that this definitely happened, uh, which he did, <laughs> then that's probably the only way. The only real appropriate way to do it, not I tr- I tripped and <laughs> missed her hand and grabbed her pants. Like what a <laughs> what a ridiculous thing to say. Um, so I I am curious if that was run by anyone in the company before he chose to make that tweets. But uh, feel feels like they probably should have just fired him. <laughs> yeah, and by not just firing him i i don't i don't know i don't understand yeah i don't to your point i don't understand how you make that statement but i also don't understand if you're drew gulak how you feel confident enough to make a statement without running it past lawyers and or a pr team wrestlers are, dumb. <laughs> wrestlers are really dumb wrestlers are very very dumb mm-hmm. that is that is correct uh cm punk our friend Phil, he's back. He's back, baby. Uh, I, uh, I sent you. A, I watched his full, almost two-hour interview with Ariel Hawani this week mm-hmm. while I was on a dog walk, and uh, I'm really glad I did. Uh, few things in life bring me as much joy, and uh, as when uh, you, I see Phil, and I'm like, there he is. There's the guy I know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so. 
He went into detail on um not to cut you off, but he went into detail on the uh all in incident with Jack Perry mm -hmm. and uh quitting AEW. And he went into a lot of detail pretty much about everything about his time with AEW except for what happened in the locker room after all out, which he said he has been NDA'd for. So mm -hmm. uh as we expected. So uh what'd you think what Phil had to say? I mean, there wasn't a lot of like, I didn't think obviously Tony Khan felt differently based on Dynamite this week, but I didn't like so much of it was just what we heard from Nick Hausman's report reports right after it happened. Phil, Phil had leaked this before. Yes. So I didn't think I mean, it's it's fun and funny hearing him like tell it in his own words for yes, sure. It like it's very entertaining. Listen yes, to him it tell the story. So it had a great entertainment value in that way. But I feel like if this was uh, if you were waiting for the big bombshell, um, I guess there was some stuff about he mentioned that, like, he had to schedule his own surgery <laughs> after he because that was after the tricep injury and pay for it yeah. and pay for it. And he was uh, peeved about that. And I agree. If you get injured in somebody's ring, they should be paying for you. They should be paying to uh, to heal you. <laughs> Yeah, um, I totally agree with that. He has an absolute legitimate uh, grievance there. And I, I think that's the that's the the wonderful thing about Phil is that there's always <laughs> legitimate grievances somewhere in there with uh, whoever, whatever wrestling company he is currently uh, enemies with. <laughs> but there's always just there's always a little bit of uh, a little bit of stuff. that's just a little a little bit self-serving, a little bit. Let's let's flip, put in a few extra little flourishes uh, to make him feel better. I did like when he said that he felt he was slandered by by Tony after after all in. Yeah, um, which I to which I said, if you actually thought that you probably would have sued him, wouldn't he? <laughs> he loves suing people. Yeah, he <laughs> loves being entwined in the, in the legal system. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So, uh, yeah, I like I said, I think it was there was great entertainment value. We maybe didn't get there wasn't a ton of new juicy tidbits. I guess he he threw in a crack about Dave and said that the people there don't really they just want to have cool matches and they don't want to uh, they're not there to draw money and sell tickets. And 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 that's what he is. He's a pro wrestler and that's he's an old school guy and that's what he's all about. Um, and the people there don't want to do that. And therefore he could, did not fit in that company and wanted out. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't think I have a, a whole lot to add on. He, he also made sure to say that he quit at gorilla. Yes. <laughs> and, and not that he was fired a week later as I think is the official <laughs> sequence of events to my understanding. <laughs> Yeah, he definitely got his uh, got his side there. He also kind of threw Tony Schiavone under the bus a little bit. Yeah, like Schiavone would ask him to get involved in this Jack Perry situation, mm -hmm. and then uh, Schiavone on his podcast says, "I don't give a shit. It would be stupid for me to get into that." <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? He's right. It would be stupid to respond to anything that Phil said on the MMA hour with Ariel Hawani. If you're if you're someone that currently works for AEW, wouldn't it? I believe so, yes. Um uh, the day that Phil did this interview, morning WrestleMania, <laughs> where mm -hmm. he talked about AEW for an hour. <laughs> well, Ariel, Ariel loves nothing more than to find a guy who will say bad things about Tony Khan and you know god bless him for it I'll tell you what there's a lot of things I don't like about Ariel Hawani one thing I like about Ariel Hawani is that he wants people to say bad things about Tony <laughs> Khan <laughs> I think that's very fun yeah it's fun um I guess the other stuff I mean Punk did Punk yeah. did uh, also uh, compare Punk did also compare Vince to <laughs> Vince McMahon to Chris Benoit and Jeffrey Dahmer so uh that's that was uh yeah he kind of went further yeah i think he he went a little bit further than uh most people in currently working for the world wrestling federation have gone in uh 
either condemning Vince in any way or and what I appreciated was that he also, you know, specifically mentioned that there are are victims involved here that need to be taken care of. So I I appreciated that he was willing to say that in a uh, there was no there was no. uh, Well, he's a father. He was like a father to me or well. Well, it just broke my heart because I I love the guy so much. There's no he just he was he was very straightforward about his thoughts on the situation. AEW made a bunch of cuts, something they've not traditionally done. Mm-hmm. That the same day that Phil talked about how they don't run it like a, a real business. <laughs> Weird timing. But uh, the Parker Boudreaux guy, who everybody thought had already been released, uh, has now been released. Mm-hmm. Stu Grayson, who worked like two days a year, and they <laughs> allegedly called him up when they were in Canada a week or so ago and said, Hey, we need you this Saturday. And he said, no, I have plans. <laughs> Playing and softball. I, I guess, I don't know. Um, he's gone. Uh, the boys, Tony Khan did a, a, a ring of honor media call on Thursday this week and mm-hmm. said that, well, the boys didn't show up to work. And then the boys went on Twitter and said, Oh, uh, oh! Is that how we're gonna do this? All right. Well, stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> so Tony Khan is shooting with the boys. Love it. Uh, Dalton Castle's boys. Uh, so, Anthony... so canonically, Dalton Castle's boys were eaten by a bear. That's, Correct. Correct. That's how they were written off of uh, Ring of Honor television. Yes. Uh, really, the 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 uh, Johnny TV, John Morris and uh, Dalton Castle feud on ROH TV should be studied. <laughs> <laughs> it should be studied for, for the art of wrestling veterans just jacking off on TV. That's <laughs> <laughs> what it is. Um, yeah, so the, uh, the, the trust busters are gone and then uh, two very... Pr- uh, Anthony Henry, who suffered a jaw injury that he thought was a broken jaw, then maybe wasn't a broken jaw um, of the work horseman was released. He got hurt in a match against Brian Keith, who was all another AEW talent on an indie show. Mm-hmm. And allegedly AEW was mad that he got hurt working a not indie show, which he was allowed to do because of the type of contract that he had. Mm-hmm. and then they cut him while he's out with this jaw injury and then I think he's back now uh, Tony did say on the media call that he will be back I guess once he heals I don't know if that means like it'll be a per appearance deal but we'll still use him or right. if they are signing him to a new contract as a result of the backlash against cutting a guy who was injured that that I don't think was made clear. He just said he'll be back in AEW and ROH once he's once he's healthy. Correct. And then the two most personal for us, uh, Jose, the assistant uh, <laughs> guy, I can't stand friend of the show. Uh, for, yeah. Jose, the assistant was uh, was axed. And uh, your your pal Dasha, the uh, ring announcer who was ring announcing on collision uh, this past weekend cut for some reason even though she had like four jobs with the company yeah that's one that really makes you scratch your head just because she wore so many hats for them and i we've talked about it i think she's a significantly better ring announcer than justin roberts is agreed um i think just overall better (laughs) better at every aspect of what you would want a ring announcer to be i know she flubs names from time to time um, I've never noticed that. I never heard you tell me that. And it's like, if you don't I've never if, notice that, I mean, I probably notice them more because like, then they end up on Botchamania or whatever. And I see, them ah, but, okay. um, but yes, she has, she has flubbed a name or time or two, probably more often than Justin Robertson. I don't think it's a constant issue, but uh, yeah. But again, ring announcing was one of, you know, one of, she had done backstage interviews. She had done Spanish commentary for them. She had done, I think she, co-hosted their podcast sometimes so she has like a bunch of roles there seemingly and i mean can't imagine they were paying her that much money and she was a pretty early on hire uh to the company as well 
So, yeah, that one seemed really disappointing and seems like she was super well liked by everybody there. So, uh, yeah, I don't I don't get it. <laughs> I don't I don't get that one at all. I mean, really, any of these people that you cut and when Tony goes on his on his call with the Ring of Honor thing this week, he says, well, you know, we need to stay competitive and be able to make big money offers to these free agents that could be coming up this year. It's like, really? Slim J was going to keep you from making a play for Drew McIntyre, was he? <laughs> Jora Joel was uh, was going to keep you from uh, signing the next big uh, New Japan or or WWE talent that hits the free agent market, was it? Yeah, that's a little disingenuous. Is it, wouldn't it just be easier to say, "Hey, we haven't made a profit yet"? <laughs> yeah, or "Hey, it's a business. These people." we have enough bodies. We don't need them. <laughs> like we have enough job guys and ROH seat fillers. We don't need, we don't need these, these 10 people or whatever. Like it's, it's, it's ruthless. And, you know, it, the previously AEW has let contracts expire without renewal, but they have not cut anyone in the middle of the contract without cause. <laughs> I should right. know. Yeah. Um, prior to this, so yeah, I mean, doing that and then saying it's a it's a cost saving measure, so you can go spend more money on on a big on bigger stars feels feels very disingenuous because you have to assume most of them are on those. I mean, it's a contract, but it's they're not they're not making they're not making six figures a year, <laughs> you know. Yes, so it's a little disingenuous to say that. Oh, we had we had to cut these people to stay competitive or whatever. It's like, well, if you were really worried about like staying competitive and looking to cut salaries, maybe you could cut like Miro or <laughs> half the other guys on the collision roster that don't want to be there. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's fair. Um so Dynamite this week uh opened with Adam Copeland. Uh, cutting a stand up for AEW promo, giving a state of the network speech, an enjoy all wrestling promo from Adam Copeland. Ugh. It was very bizarre. It was very uh, much in response to the things that CM Punk said in his inter- interview this week. And hey, I'm not a billionaire. I don't own a wrestling company. I'm not sure what I would have done if my former biggest star went out and publicly made me look like a buffoon uh, <laughs> the day before. But I don't know that I would have sent one of my new toys out to respond for me in the opening segment of my television show, two hours primetime on basic cable, uh, not building or leading to anything. This was just Adam Copeland rallying the troops. <laughs> I don't know. Weird. Like, yeah, I, I again, if 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 it's something like we need to do this for the locker room or something and you want to do it off the air, I guess it's fine. I think Dax cut a promo after after the collision taping. Yeah, as well. Kind of not not saying the exact same stuff, but doing a, you know, a lot of the same sentiments. Yes. Um, I think that's probably fine. It's probably fine to do that and, uh, you know, make sure, you know, your, you know, your, your hardcore fans are still with you and you're, and whatever, and you're not taking it light down and all that, but yeah, doing it on TV was weird. Um, and also I just, I don't like, like I said, I think, I think the punk stuff, it certainly made waves on the day, but it didn't feel like such a massive story. That's like, well, you've got to say something here. You've got to have somebody say something. And I, I was just, it just felt, it just came off really weird. And it felt like Adam was out there like begging for cheers in some of those things that people were, people were happy to see him. Like they cheered for him when he came out and they cheered when he said a bunch of different names of people he'd like to wrestle now that he's in AEW and how happy he is to be in AEW. But it's just, just kind of a weird thing to put on, to put on your TV. Um, and like I said, I just don't feel like it made it made it made waves on on the internet, but it did not make such large waves that I think you had to respond 
as compared to say when the original brawl out incident happened and you had like Moxley and Jericho cutting, you know, pretty impassioned speeches about what the company represents and, you know, that this, this locker room is ours and we're, you know, we're not going to let anybody take it away from us. Like you can understand why maybe they felt like they needed to have that message on the show the Wednesday after CM Punk punched (laughs) two of the executive vice presidents in the company. Um, I don't think you needed to do this on live television to respond to an interview with Ariel Helwani. Uh, (laughs) um, And for what it's worth, Cody was asked similar questions and was very like a pro, (laughs) like a pro was very complimentary to, to Matt and Nick and Kenny, his good friends who he definitely still likes and also to punk who he definitely likes. So like, I don't know. It, that was the other part. It's like, well, other people were asked the same questions on the same show this week and we're totally complimentary to Tony and the Bucks and everybody. So it didn't really feel like you, you needed to, this needs to be some big clap back or you'll look, you'll look weak. It's like, no, I think much like what the the elites uh, strategy clearly was while Punk still worked there, probably would have been better off just ignoring it. <laughs> just doing your show like normal yeah very much so the only remotely negative thing that cody rhodes had to say was he felt like his wife was scapegoated for her work at aew yes which which is like the closest thing he's ever come to saying uh brandy's contract wasn't going to be renewed and that's why i left aew Mm -hmm. (laughs) which he may have left anyway very possible but I think it's the cat that was the catalyst. Yeah, I think that's there's always been something. <laughs> yeah, that's one he of always tell you he, off the air. Right. Illusions. He, he always says it was a personal issue between Tony and me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's all I'll say. And it's like, well, yeah, it was personal that he was not going to rehire your wife for a figurehead role. <laughs> Correct. A large salary for a figurehead role. Mm hmm someone who has an antagonistic attitude towards wrestling fans. <laughs> it's probably not the best person to be building your brand. Probably. Um, yeah, that's that, that was probably that's, that's probably the best nugget in that Cody, other than when he said that he learned the finish of last year's WrestleMania when the ref counted three, I thought that was really funny in the ring. Yeah. Yes. They called it in the ring, brother. <laughs> sure. Like when yeah. Hogan went out there, he didn't know if Andre was going to let him beat him or not. Right. Yeah, you thought he might shoot on him, too. <laughs> yep. Yep. Amazing, amazing human beings, those two. Uh-huh. Absolutely. Uh, um, Dynamite itself, weird show. Really weird show. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Like, they set some stuff up. Mm-hmm. Um. They made uh, Tony and Thunder Rosa official for uh, the pay-per-view later this month, which, all right, I guess uh, that thing could break down into a shoot. And um, and that that's exciting. Mm-hmm, absolutely. And they had Mercedes challenge the TBS champion for the pay-per-view that's coming up at the end of May. <laughs> I'm not sure why we're selling the pay-per-view that's seven weeks away when we still have one before then, but they did that. I guess that means Mercedes isn't wrestling until the end of May. I don't know what the deal is there, and uh, I'm not no longer included in the group chat, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Uh, Adam Copeland will be, the rated R superstar Adam Copeland will be defending his uh, TNT title against Penta El Zero Mieto next week. Chris Jericho and Hook are continuing their, their great program. Uh, the Young Bucks will be wrestling either FTR or Top Flight in the finals of the tag team title tournament, which takes place at the pay-per-view in a couple of weeks. And um, Will Ospreay and Brian Danielson won their matches as they continue to uh, move towards a match against each other. And fewer people in the 18 to 49 demo watch this live uh, than uh, any shows in 2021. So uh, 
not 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 lighting the world on fire. Average seven hundred fifty-two thousand viewers total, which was actually up five thousand from last week. But the uh, in the demo lowest rating tied with last week, by the way, for the lowest rating uh, in the demo since twenty twenty-one. So um, I don't know. Baseball's back. Uh, two NBA games on cable. People don't care about ratings talk. So mm-hmm. uh, let's just stop talking about ratings. <laughs> but uh, uh, and I would love to know the DVR numbers. Uh, and no one ever reports the DVR numbers. But uh, yeah, I would assume that about as many people that watch this live will watch it on DVR at some point in the next couple of days. Yeah, probably. That seems that seems like a fair uh, assessment. Yeah, the show itself, I, I really liked the Joe Swerve contract signing. Like, I mean, it's pretty boilerplate pro wrestling angle, but yeah. they were both good in the segment. Joe yep. Joe was really, really good in that segment. And uh, yeah, uh, they, they're they just, they're kind of in a holding pattern. It's like, well, Osprey and Danielson are both uh, wrestling each other and the storyline is who's better. So they both wrestled a, a big stinky giant to see who could wrestle a big stinky giant better. Um, and they were both victorious. And then, speaking of big stinky giants, uh, the show just ground on it all. That's the other thing. It's like if you're going to do a rah rah speech and you're going to be tweeting out about your new uh, uh, your new wonderful catchphrase of AEW is "Where the best wrestle." Yeah, um, you cannot have a match that goes for like twelve minutes that is just Billy Gunn beating Jay White's ass. <laughs> Uh, or at least I would say you couldn't do that, but AEW uh, proudly proved me wrong on Wednesday evening by doing exactly that as uh, as Daddy Ass just beat the piss out of Jay White for 10 minutes through a commercial break. And then, uh, <laughs> and Before then one and after the match. <laughs> one fight is, yeah, <laughs> got low blowed for the DQ. And then, <laughs> and then he and the acclaimed beat Jay uh, and his sons up uh, some more after the match. So. <laughs> He beat him up before the match. He beat him up during the match. And then he beat him up <laughs> after the match. <laughs> and you know what? Like, I was thinking about this. It's like, there's things where I, Jay White's character is ultimately a coward, right? That's always been the deal. With yes. Him. And one of the great things about him as a performer is that when it comes time to take the ass kicking, he does it like nobody's business. Agreed. So I was thinking about like if this if you did this exact thing where you did a match where he got no offense and then he low blowed the guy and and then got beat up some more with like Hangman Page or John Moxley or like Swerve or like a top guy, yeah, this would have been awesome. <laughs> yeah, like it would have it would have been super cathartic. It would have been really fun, and it would have been like a great segment. And a great way to get like some righteous baby face fury from one of your top guys. Instead, it, it should have been like the match before the blow off match in a feud between top guys. Correct. <laughs> right. You do this. You don't get the clean pin, though. And so you build right. to and, and the ass boys get involved. So you build a cage match or whatever. Right. At the pay-per-view. <laughs> exactly. Like in a bubble doing this with J- Jay White is the perfect guy to get his ass kicked for 10 minutes in a fair fight and then slither away at the last second. Yes. But they chose <laughs> to do it with 60 year old Billy Gunn <laughs> and just, just mind boggling, honestly. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know who this was for, <laughs> for Billy Gunn. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, someone put up, I had forgotten this. He did a match with Darby like a year ago. And he kicked out of his finish at one. <laughs> I was like, Billy Gunn don't like doing no jobs. That's Why fair. does Billy Gunn, who's in his 60s, wrestle way more than either of his kids who need ring time? <laughs> right? Yeah. he's he is Crazy? The, he is the protagonist of the acclaimed trio now. <laughs> like, we went from, like, him being, like, the mascot and, like, the the reluctant old man who they like pull out of retirement because they're going to go for a run with these trios belts. Right. For one to, last job. Right. right. And now he's just, he's, he's, he's Steve Austin. He's, he's Steve Austin and Goldberg combined. Somehow he's just, 
<laughs> He's just beating everybody's ass. It's hilarious. It's great. I don't know if it's productive, but it's great. All right. Uh, a lot of WrestleMania weekend stuff coming up here. Um, all the secondary shows begin here as we record this Thursday night. I need to uh, uh, start working on uh, WrestleCon Super Show stuff with Rob Van Dam versus Speedball Mike Bailey and uh, Paul Walter Hauser and Zoe Stark and Nick Khan and Shayna Baszler are at Josh Barnett's Bloodsport mm-hmm. and uh, all these secondary things that are uh, popping up here. So everybody uh, enjoy WrestleMania weekend. And uh, Liam, is there anything else that you'd like to get into? No, I think that's uh, that about covers it. The, uh, the GCW stuff's e- easier to watch now because you can get it all for like seven ninety nine instead of having to buy all those shows individually. So oh. it is easier to keep track of those WrestleMania weekend shows if you're so inclined. That's uh, yeah, good times, everybody. There's something for you this weekend, no matter what you're into. Mm-hmm. If you're uh, really into Billy Gunn beating guys, <laughs> you can you can watch Dynamite on DVR. Um, collision will be on at 11 30 p.m this saturday night after wrestlemania so you can just you can start watching wrestling at 11 30 a.m uh with pre-show uh, for nxt on saturday and you're pretty much covered up until like uh 1 30 a.m that's you know it's quite cool. a lot of wrestling yeah. absolutely all right well until uh, next time everyone i'm ethan and i'm liam we'll be back soon with more stories from the wrestling life Bye-bye. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. No, there's no Easter eggs. I'm I'm not up to it. Go away. I try to keep on keeping on.